and welcome to Faith and Victory Church Wednesday night service in the first service of the year 2019. We are very glad to have you tonight, excited that you're with us, and we praise God that you could be here tonight. Glory to God. So we invite you to join in with us. Uh, we're going to take care of a... You know, maybe a plan and whether to join us throughout the year uh, on uh, on our um, bro live broadcast or the delay that you can watch later. Uh, we would we would love to have you be a part of what we're doing. Praise the Lord. And even part of what I'm about to talk about. Um, I, I got something I want to share tonight. We're going to share it more on Sunday. But we, um, I know we said something Sunday about I could see the light at the end of the tunnel on the church debt. And I went back and looked. We we were in the neighborhood about four years ago of about eighty thousand dollars of debt, just that we could we could not see you know how in the world we're paying that off. It's down to thirty five. Okay, and I was just thinking about well then we could pay that off in two and a half years. Da, 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 da. Kind of at the rate we're doing right now, we could pay that off. It's, it's, it's some of these things get paid, we could pay more on others and this kind of stuff. But the Lord, I believe, the Lord spoke to me and said, "You just need ten people." Who will commit to hundred dollars a month for for one year? Now, don't you maybe maybe you can do fifty or twenty five or whatever a month. But if we have ten people give either one time gift of twelve hundred or a hundred dollars a month for a year, um, we can pay this off in eighteen months. Okay, if they went if you went past the year and kept going, we were paying off in less. Than, we can be totally debt free in eighteen months. Now, this to me is exciting because at that moment we free up two thousand dollars in cash flow which we could use towards a new place. So to me, I'm looking at this going, in, in, in 18 months, we can have money on hand with the church size, we are, we're not growing, just at the church size we are right now, to move into a new place and cover it and not be, you know, still bound with this other that's holding us back. So I want you to prayerfully consider Committing to, I mean, the the the, door, the Lord, the figure gave me the Lord was a hundred dollars. I know people in church, they're not going to be able to do that. There are people that won't be able to do a hundred. They'll be able to do fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, fifty, whatever. But if we can get a combination of ten people, two families making a hundred, whatever, or people watching us who who are part of what we're, they want to be a part of what we're doing, uh, I need to I need to share this. We're not, we're here on live. We're not even sharing it. I got some kids out there looking at us. <laughs> Hallelujah through the door. Praise the Lord. Um, we can see this debt gone. And I'll be honest with you, to be to be uh, that free financially with no the payment here and the payment on the storage unit. Well, then that money could obviously go towards um a pay payment on something on a building or something like that, along with the other money. We would free up so much money um, here at the ministry to be able to do things that God has for us to do. So um, I am excited. I, I, I trust that, you know, you can see with me um, the importance and the, ex the, the excitement of being able to do this. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just sharing so you guys can watch or other people can tune in. Um, of being in a position to be out of that debt. Uh, we paid over six thousand dollars in interest last year. Uh, I don't have to, it's more than it's more than six. I don't know how much it all was. I'd have to go back and add everything up, but that's money wasted. That's six thousand dollars that could have been used for the kingdom. It's got to go. Now, four years ago, it was eighty thousand dollars. We're paying we're paying way more than four about six thousand a year. Okay, we are we are we are. I mean I'm, I mean I got I just got thrilled. I was just all over. I was like, we can do we can see this done. And we were just plugging along, plugging along, plugging along, plugging along. And then I just got this urge, go add up where you are. And so I got everything and added it all up. And I went, we were about $80,000 four years ago. We're at 35. 35 is doable. I mean, it seriously is doable um, with that extra money that I'm talking about. So uh, 10 people, 10 families, 10 individuals. Um, combination of thereof, coming up with a uh, hundred dollars a month for a year, or one time twelve hundred. However, you want to, if you commit, however you want to do it. Obviously, any upfront stuff helps because we can pay stuff off right away and get that out of the way. And um, but so we're looking at twelve hundred dollars now. Divided out, 
over 12 months as a, as a one-year commitment. We believe, I'm, I'm excited because I want us to be looking and going, okay, we can not just pray about a new building, we can actively pursue it with, with the knowledge we, can, we got the money to go do it with, okay? And if, we, if it takes us a little bit longer to find it, we can just put the extra money away for upfit and being ready for it. Instead of going in and going, well, we got to raise forty thousand dollars to upfit with. I am I, I am thrilled about the possibility, uh, the, with the possibility of being debt free in, in twelve to eighteen months as a ministry, completely debt free. I mean, debt free. So, if that's if that is something you want to do, I will be bringing um, Sunday. I'll be bringing commitment cards for you. Okay. Now we want you to tell us that you're, you know, you're, if you're committing, and if it's twenty-five dollars a month is all your family can do, then that's all you can do, and we're not uptight about that. Okay. I, you know, Brother Hagen used to put on on his on his commitment cards to the ministry three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. Most people just start at twenty. He would put three. You can be a partner by giving three dollars a month. Cause see, that's where that's where some people had to start. Or that's where some people were. Three dollars a month was all they had. They didn't have anything else. Well, three dollars is important. Now, number one, you're giving them the opportunity to sow in. Okay? And we're not showing up at your house. I'm not coming to your house, Joe. And I'm not going to sit down and say, give me your, your uh, paychecks and let me see how much you can sacrificially give and tell you what we expect you to commit to. And then, yeah. <laughs> And then the first ten percent goes to me as, as as the one who got it all taken care of. That's not that's not what we're talking about. We're not going to be doing that. But if you see in your heart that you can you can commit to that. Those of you watching us, if you see in your heart that you know you'd like to be a part of what we're doing and you want to commit, we would love to have you join us. Obviously, we would love to have you join us. Um, uh, you know, you go you, then you go. If twenty people did it, we'd be paid off in there like eight months, nine months. I mean, we would be at it. We'd be so fast it wouldn't even, our head would spin actually if 20 people did it in 10 months we'd be out of debt that's 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 where it is that's just you know you start looking at the numbers you start going this thing could just roll the coaster and, and be done with and we'd be, be shouting running up down the streets of glory amen so um this is a plan it's it's not a gimmick it's not a you know if you give if you give to this to reduce the church's debt and get us out of debt in the next year you're going to you know, you're going to have a Mercedes waiting in your driveway next Christmas with a red bow on it. This is, the, we need the liberty financially as a ministry to do things, and we're asking you to connect with us on taking care of that. Um, this is your church. Those of you watching are friends of the ministry, are friends of us. We, we would love to have you join us. So the $100 a month commitment for one year or a one-time $1,200 gift, or if we've got families that are, you know, 50 or 25, it adds up to a person. That one hundred dollars, we we just need you know basically a thousand dollars a month, extra towards this. this is what we're after. Ten people, hundred dollars a month, thousand dollars. Okay, twelve thousand dollars over a year toward the debt. That added to what we pay each month means in eighteen months we're debt free. Okay, um, then that means we can go do. There's just other things we can go do. Where's your faith? My faith is that God. I believe God showed this to me. It just I wasn't even thinking about the debt. You know, we're just we're paying it every month. He said, do this, and I did it, and he said, now do this. So I'm obeying him. I'm not trying to manipulate you. And again, if you're here and you can't afford, you don't have it, if you want to give a dollar a month, we want, to, we want you to give your dollar. We want you to be a part at a dollar a month, okay? Because we want you to have seeds sown for your life and for, your, and for God to bless your family, amen? And we will not look on any seed as an um, unworthy seed. Amen. We cherish everybody's gift. Okay. So anyway, those watching, they're 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 going to put up. They have put up on the screen an online giving. If you want to be a part of, of doing that, uh, either a one-time gift of twelve hundred or a hundred dollars a month for a year, just a year. We're not asking you to commit for life. We're not, you know, asking you to commit. You know, until Jesus comes back. We're just asking for that. You know, we're asking for a one one-year commitment, um, so that we can be uh, free financially, to do things that we just need to do okay, and get this mess out of the way.
Praise the Lord. Like one of the things we can do is I can go back and go preach over, do some OC stuff that the Lord's got on my heart to do. Okay? And uh, we put a lot of stuff on hold, and uh, it's time to get off a of hold and get on go. All right? How many believe we can, how many believe with me? So you've got you to you connect with me by faith that we can see this done in a year. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, hoorah. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Well, we're glad y'all are joining us. And those of you watching, if, you know, thank you for uh, putting up with this few, for a few minutes uh, while we, we cover this. A guy, hey, brother, um, glory to God. Amen. Uh, you, you've gotten your, we're going to move back into our, our different types of prayer. And um, we, we uh, just gave you a sheet. It's on the seven Hebrew words for praise. Remember, remember we've covered uh, numerous types of prayer. I'm not going to write them all up here because it's, 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 there's so many. But, you know, we've, we have talked about the prayer of faith, okay? And what do we also say the prayer of faith is? Believing and what? And receiving. And we, we talked about the prayer of consecration and dedication. I am not writing all that out, okay? Consecration dedication. And we call that what? A pre-prayer. I didn't originate that. I got that from Bob Yanian. Okay? And, uh, but, you know, the fact is that we have to have our hearts prepared to be able to do other kinds of prayer. Amen? And what, what do we say consecration, dedication, puts, what kind of zone does it put you in? Y'all remember? Huh? No. no. Yeah, there was no pride. That's right. Pride. Ego. Pride. Yeah. The kind of same thing. Pride. So we said this gets you into the. No pride zone. It gets that ego out of the way in prayer as you consecrate and dedicate to the Lord. You're, you're committed to him and you, sac you, you submit yourself to his will and his wants and you're, you're putting him first in your approach to prayer. Okay, so this, that gets that pride out of the way. And, and so consecrating and dedicating yourself to God, uh, not my will, but your will be done. Okay, uh, gets you in a position that when you're praying the prayer of faith or the other types of prayer, um, there is a, <clears throat> there's a removal. Your ego gets out of the way. You're not praying stuff to try to prove to everybody you're great. How, look how great my faith is. I can do this. You'll never do that with this. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. So by consecrating and dedicating to the Lord, you're able to get past this and get this out of the way so that you can go on with God in other areas of prayer. So tonight we're just going to kind of begin along the line of, we call it prayer of praise, adoration, worship. It's kind of threefold, you know, they, they kind of a little bit different approach on each of these. Um, you know, we, we kind of all have traditionally thought that, that you know, praise was fast songs. You know, the Tulsa two-step, doing the little Jewish dance thing. You know, that's praise. <clears throat> Worship was real slow, you know. And um, so um, we're just going to kind of go off. We're going to start off, first of all, in praise, okay. Um, in the, in the, in the uh, Old Testament, there are seven major words for praise. Okay, we kind of want to cover those a little bit. I am not going to write in Hebrew. First of all, I can't. And then second, if I did, it was, it's going to be like artwork, and my artwork sucks. So it's not going to happen, okay? Praise the Lord. So I gave you these sheets so you could have this and follow along. You wouldn't have to try to write all this stuff down. Um, but I'm, I'm, So we'll write up. We'll write this. First of all, we had the word halal or halal. Okay. Anybody can, can, can you kind of look at it and kind of figure out what that root word is? Halal, lu, ya. Okay. Or really it would be, in, in, with Hebrew transliteration, it would be uh, Y-A-H. Okay. And ya being what, the root of. <laughs> just love the way I write, don't you? Hallelujah. Of Yahweh, Y-H-W-A. Yeah, I left out the H there. H. 
okay? And this is halal to Yahweh, okay? That's what that kind of is, is, is what this word is the root word to hallelujah. Now, it is a primary Hebrew um, word for praise. Our word hallelujah comes from this base word. Now, it means, the halal means to be clear, to praise, to shine, to boast, to show, to rave, to celebrate, and to be clamorously foolish. Okay? Now, this is pretty much a... Now, Pentecostals, all right, and Charismatics. I mean, we, 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 Pentecost, Charismatic was also referred to as Neo-Pentecostalism, okay, uh, because it's, it's like my, my Pentecostal pastor used to say, if you take the, the Charismatics and the Pentecostals, put them in the back, shake them and dump them out, you won't be able to tell them apart, okay? Uh, just, you know, some had a background where they were, um, where they were out of an Episcopal church or Baptist church. They weren't, they didn't grow up Pentecostal. They grew up uh, a, a, a mainline denomination and then uh, got, got filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? And so halal, you know, you know, so we have Psalm 113, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 113, I'm just going to give you a few scriptures here. 113, 1 through 3, okay? And um, it means praise, halal, ye the Lord. Praise, halal, all ye, ser all ye servants of the Lord. Praise, halal, the name of the Lord. Now, we're to what? We're to, be, we're to boast, we're to rave, we're to celebrate. The Lord. We're to praise, we're to boast, we're to celebrate as servants of the Lord. We're to praise, we're to boast, we're to rave the, about the name of the Lord. You know, there, there is an emotional element to halal. Now, I said element. Okay? It doesn't start in the emotions and move backwards. But it does start in your heart and move into the emotions. Okay? Now, if all we're doing is um, if all we're doing is being emotional. Now, you know, uh, we know churches are cultural. Okay? You go to a white liturgical church and you think you're at a cemetery. You go to a black Baptist church and you think you're in the middle of Ramah's camp meeting. Okay? Even if they're not speaking in tongues, they's they wild. They know how to shout. Okay? I mean, I used to used to witness to the girls I worked with in the restaurant a number of years ago, and they say, Brother, you know how to shout? I think, you ain't even saved, girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> and, but they know how to shout. See? Now, what is that? That's emotions. Uh, uh, my, uh, my assistant principal at the school I work at was talking to me recently about a, 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 um, a guy named... Uh, Mirage or somebody, but he is he's he's he has wrote a book about his experience. At four years old, his parents had taught him to hoop and to preach, and they ordained him at four years old. He did marriages at four years old. He could preach with the you know, and uh, I said it, the, the Lord is God. I mean, he could do all of it, and people all thought he was anointed because it was emotional. We, and we didn't learn to distinguish emotional from spiritual. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm kind of giving a little clarification. Yet halal will have an emotional effect. It will get into your emotions. And that's okay. As long as not your emotions substituting for your spirit. All right? It should, the, praising God should affect us emotionally. I say affect your emotions. Not it be an emotional deal that's not affecting your spirit. Okay? So, um, and again, we're going with halal, remember, to praise, to shine, to boast, to show, to rave, to celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. Okay? So, uh, halal the Lord, Psalm 151. Halal God in his sanctuary. Halal him in his mighty expanse. Psalm 149.3. Let them halal his name in the dance. Now, we got churches right now that just absolutely, they would run you out of town if you came and started dancing in their church. That's emotionalism. Well, it can be. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. It can be. <clears throat> I have been in meetings where, where, uh, hey, Tommy, uh, where what was going on 
was pure emotional. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't any more spiritual than a man on the moon. I've seen people in like services of laughter where they just going to laugh until everybody else tries to, and everybody starts joining in with them, and it's all an emotion. It wasn't spiritual. I was, at, I was at a meeting a number of years ago in Tulsa, and um, we had a night one night that was just, I mean, Brother Hagan got, well, it was at Raymond. <laughs> Brother Hagan, you know, where else would he be? <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but he, we'd had, we had the night of service before it came unglued. But see, I've been around these things long enough. You, you can, you can not, not the spirit of judgment, but you can discern when something's God. Your spirit will bear witness to, the, to what is the Holy Ghost. Okay? And the night before was God. Oh, my goodness. It, I mean, it just it came. I've been, I've, as a Pentecostal boy, I've been to services like that. It was down at the, at the uh, Falcon Camp meeting down in Dunn, North Carolina, where um, we were having the, um, the, uh, a, a district meeting, and they had um, um, Ray Hughes, who at the time was the general overseer of the Church of God, and he was preaching for the camp meeting. And uh, right in the middle, uh, the power of God just fell in that place. Nobody worked it up. It just, boom, came unglued. He just stopped and said, this is a divine interruption. And boy, really, it came and glued then. And I've, you know, so I've been in places like that. <coughs> I've experienced services like that. But then I've been in services where people try to make it happen. Because it happened before. It happened the night before. So we're out there in Brother Hagin's ministry. And, and, and this, this woman's out there, and she starts going, <laughs> And the only way I could describe it, she sounded like the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay? And, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> and a few people around here try to go, well, <laughs> we're supposed to laugh. But I think they're talking. And finally, he just stopped, you know, and just sat, just sat there while she sat there, and there were a few people around there trying to get, you know, get, get this laughter. You can't try to work something up the one night just because it happened the night before. And spiritual things. And you can always preach the word, always teach the word. We're people of the word first, then of the spirit. They work together. But we always have to have the word as the foundation. And then, you know, yield to the Holy Ghost, the teacher, the anointed one, the one who anoints and brings things out in Revelation out. And um, finally, after about a few minutes of her doing this and, and it just not taking off, and she won't quit. And I'm just saying, and it got more high pitched, and you know, you're thinking, "My God, it sounds like the devil's out there laughing instead of the, you know the Holy Ghost." And uh, I'll never forget. He, he, he said, uh, <clears throat> "Brother David, come up here." Brother David Ingalls. He came up and got on the piano, and sat down, and he started playing. I, I I believe, if I remember correctly, he started singing. There's a whole lot of people going home. There's a whole lot of people. Going home by the signs of time, it won't be long. And in about three minutes, the entire building was on their knees in a holy presence of God. You see, so halal to be clamorously foolish and to, to respond with raving and boasting, yeah. But there are times, and it should affect your emotions. But you can't take your emotions and try to make that happen when it's not God, what God needs or wants done at that time. Okay? We want to be sensitive to the Spirit. We want to be yielded to the Holy Ghost. We want to be able to express our hearts toward God and follow that. But we can't take learned behavior and try to make that something it's not. Now, growing up Pentecostal, I mean, when Rock Church came out with that, you know, that little Jewish dance they were doing, you know, John and Ann Jimenez, you know, they, and all the little Rock Churches down in Eastern Carolina and stuff, they had little satellite churches, and, you know, and everybody was, you know, if you didn't do this little kind of Jewish two-step thing, you weren't spiritual. And everybody thought they were in the Holy Ghost when they were dancing that way. Well, I've seen people in the Holy Ghost doing the Pentecostal chicken. I mean, with bobby pins flying all over the room. <laughs> You know, the beehives coming down. 
I've seen them get blessed in the two in the Tulsa, Tulsa two step of that little Jewish dance. We can't formulate things and call it halal because this is pray, remember what Jesus said: they worship and worship in spirit and in truth. It comes up out of our heart. And it, uh, that, that's why I did say it does have an emotional element. It will affect your emotions. It will. Okay? We're told to rejoice. That will affect your emotions. Amen? Um, praise the Lord. And so there are, there are numerous scriptures throughout the Old Testament that use the word halal. And... Um, you know, and, and if you go, you know, and, and the thing is, if you go through the Old Testament and you see praise, you might think it's all the same thing, but it's not. There's there's these different words. So, you know, this one we start off where it's halal, to be, you know, to boast, to be clamorously foolish, to rave, to celebrate. I mean, it is. It's you know, it's wide open. And uh, and let me, let me be honest with you. The type of service can determine if that's the flow of God or not. It really can. There are times to be introspective and, and quiet before the Lord. And you're not unspiritual by being quiet before the Lord. You know, sometimes you need to shut up so he can talk. Hello? So that he, you, he can, you can hear what he's saying. You know? We think as long as we're dancing and hopping and, you know, running and shouting glory to God and breaking chairs and all that kind of stuff, you know, rolling under the pews and rolling out the front door of the church and hanging from the chandeliers, um, that's we're, 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 do, we're doing something. Yeah, we need to praise God. We need to have halal. We need to be clamorously foolish. We need to have those experiences in, in praise. But it's not the only kind. Okay? So we get trained. We get, um, we get fashioned to certain things. And let's face it if, it, if it's real and it does affect our emotions, we like the effect it has on them because it is uplifting. It is, it is, um, there, there, there is joy. There is a relief emotionally by being in the, in, in the halal with God. Okay? There is, a, there is a spiritual release through the emotions in that. And uh, it, it almost euphoric. It gives you a, it gives you a boost. Praise the Lord for it. Amen? I said amen. But you can't come into town and do a six-week meeting in every service, morning, noon, and night. You laugh for three hours. And we've had people come into Greensboro and do that. And then the people that they laugh for three for six weeks, three times a day for three hours, uh, each time call you up on the phone. you got to get in this meeting. Oh, I can't hardly talk. I'm so drunk laughing. Up. And you see them a month later, and they look like Eeyore. No matter, it was a good meeting, but it's gone now. I mean, you're like, I mean, you're like Pigpen from Peanuts Gang. There's a dark cloud all over them. Okay, our 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 event, our um, encounters with God and our growth with God should last longer and have a longer lasting effect in our lives than you know. Wow, everybody in the building is laughing for for six weeks, and then when they Guy packs up and leaves town. You're done. You're done. You're back to where you were before. The things we impart must take you know, make spiritual impartation. And our halal with God should create a spiritual encounter with God. And the celebrating should be. And the braving and the boasting should be out of the heart that's in communion with God. Okay? All right. Um, next... We're going, to, we're going to kind of get into this. We won't go you know, too many tonight. All right? Um, to yada. Okay? The next Hebrew word is yada. Y-A-D-A-H. You have that on your paper there. Uh, it's, and that's a verb. It's an action. It's a meaning. It's an action. And with the root meaning, it means to extend the hand, <coughs> to throw out the hand, uh, therefore to worship God with the lift of hand, or to lift hands. Um, it is the opposite of to bemoan by the wringing of hands. Oh, God, what am I, 
well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You die is exactly opposite. Okay? It's, and, and, and in this, there is a submission to him implied. I'm yielded to you. I'm looking to you for answer. Now, um, we used to go, you know, when, when the, all, the kids were all young, and, and if, if you, before Nathan was born, um, we would, uh, we'd, we still hiked a lot. Even after Nathan was born, we hiked, but it, it got harder because Jesse didn't want to walk. I remember one time, we were going to, we were going to Abrams Falls. Now, if you go to Cades Cove over in Tennessee, outside of Pigeon Forge, near, um, down Cades Cove on the, uh, on the edge of Smoky Mountain National Park, um, not quite Mary, not Maryville. I forgot the little town's name that's right down there on that end of uh, everything. But, you know, um, it's a five-mile hike. You drive and you get there and you get out of your car, you get it and go into the hike trail. It's five miles in and out. Okay, so, so it's two and a half in and two and a half out. Uh, uphill, I mean, some steep inclines down, there you go, so forth. Beautiful waterfall, 25-foot wide waterfall there at the bottom. Uh, you can go swimming just right, not, not right up under the waterfall. And uh, we did when we, we have... And um, so I got Shannon in the backpack. All right. Jesse's about four. Shannon's in the backpack. And Jesse gets in front of me and starts going, Daddy, carry me, carry me, carry me. So I have Jesse, Shannon on the back, Jesse on the front. But what I, you know, and, and I'm hiking in. We're on the way in. When Amy started coming back out, yeah, she's wanting Daddy to carry her. But what I was after was she lifted the hands to her daddy for him to take control of her, to nurture her. And see, Yada is that is, is, is to lift the hands, lifting up holy hands, amen? You know, lifting up her hands without, without doubting, without wrath. Okay? We're, 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 yield, we're, we're coming to God. And we're signifying that we totally are dependent upon him. And we are. You can't save yourself. You can't fix yourself. You can't do all the things you need to do to yourself. I mean, that doesn't absolve you from studying and, and making right decisions. I know, I understand that. But we need God. We need God in our life to enable us to do. Amen? And so by lifting the hands, okay, it, it is that symbol. Uh, of, of yieldedness to him. So we come into the service. And I remember, you know, growing up as you know, Pentecostal, when I got saved and got baptized in the Holy Ghost and went to church, you know, you just, you had to hold your hands up longer than anybody. You had to be the spiritual one. Because you're going to have them up there. You didn't even know why you raised your hands, just knew that we Pentecostals did that. And honestly, that's true. I had no idea why we raised our hands. I just know that you're in a Pentecostal church, we raise our hands. Okay, I raise my hands. I ain't never saw it in the Baptist church. The only time they said amen is when they had a Southern Gospel Quartet come in. They said, please let me sing in the choir. Please let me sing in the choir. In the amen, brother. You know, I mean, there, was, there wasn't any shouting. There wasn't, I mean, you know, just wasn't nothing going on. You know, the one to a hand lifting. All right. We didn't see, I, didn't, I never saw any of that. Uh, but in, my, in the Pentecostal church, I was, I, everybody raised their hands. Okay. Even for prayer. Anybody got an unspoken request? It was up quick, down quick, but it was an unspoken request. Yeah, you know, how the women would sit there with arms crossed? They sit there with arms crossed. They, they, they had that flipper down. You got any unspoken request? Yeah, that's right. You paid her waving the bugs off. Hallelujah. So anyway, um, 2 Chronicles 20, 21 says, give thanks, or yada. See, it, the word is also pra translated praise, or it's translated give thanks. Uh, to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Okay? Throw your hands up and just say, oh, thank you, Father. I praise you. It is an acknowledgement that the help's coming from him. He is the one you look to. He is the one who ministers to you, and you're submitted to him. Amen? Psalm 63, 1, So I will bless thee as long as I live. I will yada, lift up my hands in thy name. Okay, lift up my hands. I will yada thee. Psalm 107, 15, Oh, men, oh that men would yada the Lord for his goodness. 
and for his wonderful works to the children of men. All that men would acknowledge my, their need for God because he's good. Even Christians need to acknowledge we need him. Now, it's not, Lord, you got me this far, I'll take care of the rest. Okay? It, it honestly, it honestly isn't. Because I need you every day. I need you working in my life. I need, I need your presence. I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. I'm not absolving us of our responsibilities. You understand? I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say that. But we can get so caught up with what we do we forget him. We forget that God's involved in this thing, and if, if he's not involved in it, we're in trouble. It's like that preacher said one time, and I heard him say it, and I was like, you better back up, pal. I love your ministry. I love you, but that, that was off key, and that was off color. It was, it was just wrong. You know, if, if G God wasn't real, if Jesus wasn't real, if the Bible wasn't real, I'd still live by faith because it works. Well, if God wasn't real and Jesus wasn't real and the Bible wasn't real, there wouldn't be any faith. And we wouldn't be here, I mean, obviously. But, <clears throat> and I know, I, I, in kind of a backhanded way, I think I kind of understand what he was trying to say. We can never remove God from it. <clears throat> we have to be yielded to him. We have to be submitted to him. We have to recognize he is the one that brings the blessing. And that when there is need, we, we go to him. Okay? Praise the Lord. Um, let's, let's look at one more. I, I'm going to raise the Pentecostal stuff here, guys, because I need room. Okay? Y'all should have gotten that. Okay? Um, Toda. Right? And you've got all those scriptures, the extra scriptures there on that sheet. Um, it comes from the same principle word as yada. In other words, the root to yada is the root to tada. Okay? It's not tada. All right? It's a, uh, um, it's, but it's more specific. It literally means an extension of the hand in adoration, avowal, or acceptance. Okay? And by way of application, it is apparent in the Psalms and elsewhere it's used for thanking God for things not yet received as well as things already at hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the answer. All right, I thank you for what you've already done. Okay? Uh, it is acknowledgement that he is the supplier and the one who has supplied. You know, there's a warning in the Scripture to stay, to be vigilant and mindful about things, lest you say, my hand hath gotten me this. By lifting your hand to him, you're acknowledging it's his hand that provided that. Yes, you've been good to me. You've been real good to me. Amen. And so we, we have to be more um, aware of these things. Psalm 50, 14 says, Offer unto God praise, ta-da, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Uh, I, I know I had relatives that, you know, Lord, if you'll get me out of this hospital, I'll quit smoking and I'll start going to church. And didn't even last a week. And didn't quit smoking. You know? One preacher said, if God wanted you to smoke, he'd put a smokestack on top of your head. Psalm 50, 23 says, Whosoever offereth praise to Doc, acknowledges, glorifies me. And to him that ordereth his conversation or lifestyle right, him will I show the salvation of God. To him that offereth praise, to him that offereth to Doc, to him that raises the hand in adoration, in recognition that the blessings you've already got and the blessings that come, come, come from him. Glorifies him. We bring honor to the Lord. We honor the Lord in that man, manner, in that way. Amen? And that's what we want to do. We want to honor the Lord. We want to magnify. We want, we want to glorify him. We want God blessed and pleased. Amen? Now, I know he, I, I, I don't really think this happens in the throne. It could. Now, we don't want when our name is mentioned, we're going, oh, that one. 
That's a, a little sarcastic. I, I don't know that really happens. But we would like for when we, you know, that when we are in his presence, and I, I know the other side of this. He's always with us. He never leaves us. But there's, there's entering into his presence. Okay? There's acknowledgments. There are, you know, sometimes with the, our word of faith circles, we get so cocky about our revelation, we miss stuff. We miss understanding some things. We don't see some things because we're so cocky about how much we know, and how much, how together we got it. I found out in the number of years since I've been serving the Lord, a lot of us don't have it anywhere near as together as we think. Okay? Um, we, could, we, can, we can parrot a lot of people, but we haven't lived a lot of the things we parrot. Uh -huh. We can talk it, but talking and walking it are two different things. Amen. And we, we need to get to where we can walk it as much as we can talk it. And not be so stinking cocky. We, 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 listen, I, I, some of y'all are not old enough to remember the days of the super cockiness. You never saw some of the stuff that we saw uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I mean, the arrogance of some people. I mean, I, I'm guessing it's still out there, but I'm telling you. Well, it is. I mean, you got, we just moved on to a different camp. Now, now some of the, you know, the, the grace people that are just so arrogant that it's, uh, it, it's you know, just turns your stomach. You know, they're, they're so full of grace except for anybody that disagrees with them. Kind of like the tolerant crowd in the world who will tolerate everything except your disagreement. Okay? Uh, it might be the same spirit. Did I say that? Jeff? I didn't say that. Did I say that? Okay. Okay. Um, Let's do one more and we're going to quit for tonight because we'll pick up the last three next week, okay? And, and again, we're not going to super depth about this. These are, you know, you've got these things. You can go study them. You've got some different scriptures to look at. <coughs> um, um, if you don't have it in, in, in electronic form or whatever, um, or if you don't have like electronic study Bibles or whatever, or if your electronic study um, tools don't have the Englishman's Concordance, I encourage you to get it. Because what that does is if you like took the word yada and uh, found the Strong's number for the word praise there, where it's yada, Englishman takes that number and shows you everywhere in the Bible that number that that Hebrew word would be used, and when it's the Greek, it's the Greek word is used, and you get to see how it's used throughout the Bible. Okay, everywhere it's used, and it's called the Englishman's Concordance. All right, very good study tool, very good for for kind of going the opposite way. We say we, instead of just finding a word, so we're taking the word praise and we're finding different words that represent the word praise. Well, then you can now take the word that's translated praise with the English and go find out how it's translated throughout the Bible. Give you a New Testament example, sozo. Sozo is translated to save, okay, to heal, to be made whole, to deliver, to preserve. You could take Englishmen's, and if you took Englishmen's and took the, the Strong's number for sozo and went to the Englishmen's, you'd find all the scriptures where the word sozo is used, and it would broaden your perspective of the word sozo instead of just whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be sozo. Okay? You know, uh, then you start seeing where it was, and, and, he, uh, and they were healed and made whole. Okay? Now, you know, soterius is the noun form of, of, of relative of sozo. So, um, you know, health. Salvation, those kind of things, all right? Um, but strong, strong, Englishmen will be very beneficial um, in your study. If you have electronic version, see if they have that as an add-on. It's, it's, it's good to have, okay? Uh, I have PC Study Bible, and, and it has that in there, and it's great because you find Strong's Word, you can go over to Englishmen, click on Englishmen, and then boom, it, about three seconds or less, and you got every scripture in the Bible that uses that particular uh, Greek or Hebrew word, all right? Very good for studying. So uh, you could go find your halal, yada, toda, um, and not, not toda. Probably, that, probably mutilated the pronunciation, but okay. All right. Now, Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat. Anybody, somebody said one time, how do I remember what Shabbat means? Just remember Shambat. <laughs> yeah. 
<coughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way a lot of people remember what it means. Uh, it means to shout, to address in a loud tone, to command, to triumph. You know? I mean, we're loud. Glory to God! Hallelujah! Oh, yes, he was. Shout, yeah, somebody! <laughs> Love, Brother Shambach. Amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout, Shabbat to God. What? With the voice of triumph. For joy, the voice of triumph. Okay? One, that's Psalm 47, 1. Psalm 145, 4. One generation shall praise Shabbat, the works to another, and declare thy mind. I mean, they're, be, they're being loud. <coughs> they're being boisterous. They're, they're being very vocal in praising God. God, you're great. You're awesome. Now, I get it. A lot of people want silent prayer, which is an oxymoron. Because prayer by virtue of the very title, the, the Greek word atio means to ask. It means it's sort of this ver verbalization in prayer. If you're silently praying, you're meditating. Uh, and actually, not even that, because meditate means to mutter. Okay? You're thinking. You're thinking about something in your mind. But it's not silent prayer. Okay? Because it's not verbalized. You don't have to be loud, but it needs to be verbalized. Okay? We speak. We're speaking spirits. Okay? Shabbat was to be loud. Shambat. So just remember that. Okay? You're in a service and people just are just shouting the glory to God. God, you're good. There's they're Shabaki. That's not a proper word, but you get it. They're, they're engaging in, in Shabak. Okay? And um, we need to have, you know, listen. <coughs> cry out. Cry aloud and shout for joy, O inhabitants of Zion. For great in the midst, in your midst, is the Holy One of Israel. Now, let me say this. People shouldn't wonder if you love God. Now, we got people who walk around, you don't wonder if they, if they ratchet or not. It's, 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 a, it's a ghetto term for lady of the evening type people. They're ratchet. You are, you are a, you know, they said, they said recently over Christmas that Santa's going to have to stop using the word ho, ho, ho because it was offensive to hookers. <laughs> I'm like, okay, who comes up with this stuff? <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, you get you know, they talk, people talking loud and being you know, obnoxious with their, their, uh, their sin and all this kind of stuff. And they don't mind shouting about getting drunk and shouting about that they're, they're looking for a man and shouting about, you know, all this kind of stuff. We, people don't need to wonder about you either. Amen. Glory to God. John Osteen was at a ball game one time. And uh, he, he was going to some, I don't know if it was a college football game or some kind of football game, but he was there. And the guy behind him was drunk. And he cussed, he cussed the official for a bad call and spilled beer all over the place. And he finally turned around and said, uh, sir, please. Now I'm a preacher. I have my family here. Brought my family to the game. We just want to enjoy the game. You know, and uh, I, I would appreciate if you just stop cussing, particularly using the Lord's name in vain. I'm sorry, preacher, I'm sorry. You know, you, now, probably now they, they start F-bombing you, you know. And, um, but next good play, all of a sudden, he heard behind him, Hallelujah! He said he, and then all of a sudden the guy went, slapped him on the back and said, How's that, preacher? <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we got a hallelujah out of here instead of, you know, God's name in vain. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but Christians need, you know, we've we got to have times of Shabbat. We shout. There's something good about shouting. There's, there is, a, again, kind of like halal being clamorous and foolish, there is a release spiritually when you shout about God, how great God is and how wonderful God is. It's just uh, something in the atmosphere around you. And it's good for you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we're going to stop right here, pick up next week, and we'll talk about Zamar and Tehillah and Barak, okay? Uh, most Christians engage in Barak, and uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, we need more Christians engaging in a little Shabbat, I mean Shabbat. 
Hallelujah. And all those who have joined us tonight, we sure appreciate you joining us. And um, so we're, we're going to receive our, our tithe and offering tonight. Uh, if you need an offering envelope, Brother Joe is uh, ready to assist you. And um, again, if you're giving electronically, you could, you could do that through Square Cash or PayPal. Uh, that information goes up on the screen here in a second on how to do that. Uh, and once again, before we close out tonight, we'll be, we, we, will, we will recover this information on Sunday. But if you want to commit to a, um, <clears throat> a one-year commitment of $100 a month or a one-time commitment of $1,200, um, we would appreciate it. We see our way out of debt within a year to a year and a half. And um, depending, again, on how many people connect, we, we're looking for 10 minimum for the 18 months. If more people go and we get 15 to 20, we're going to see this thing take place in a year uh, or less. I mean, things, things, things roller coaster sometimes. They just take off, and I, I like seeing things take off. And um, we're 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 going to get Jesse. She doesn't know it yet to make us a thermometer. Okay. <laughs> and it's going to be a, it's going to be a countdown thermometer where we somehow we got to figure out how to be able to to get rid of the color and bring it down from our debt. Uh, so that when it goes up, it's going to have the current debt, and then we're going to watch it come down over the next. 12 to 18 months and disappear to zero and just sh just shout. We'll do some shabaking. Amen. We'll do some halal. Amen. We will lift our hands. We will yada and to die the Lord because we'll recognize him and amen and all of this. And, and, and I believe you're going to be blessed in the process. Amen. I'm not, I'm not going to make you some extravagant promises. Amen. I am not going to make you promise that your house is going to be debt-free in a year if you do this. I think that's foolish. But I do know God will bless you. And God will honor the sacrifice. And there are principles in the Word of God that are true. And God will honor His Word in your life. And you put your faith out there. That you're working, for the, you're working to bless the kingdom and you're trusting God to bless you to be able to do it and to, and to continue to do it. And, and to even do more. Amen? Praise God. Uh, we're going to right, tithe an offering, and you know, anybody committed to special offering, you can put that in. We don't, you know, we're going to start it on Sunday as far as officially. If you're, you're itching, go ahead. All right? Um, but, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those who are tithing and giving right now. We bless them according to your word. And your word says, bring the tithe into the storehouse. You'll open up the windows of heaven. You'll empty out on them blessings that they don't have room enough to receive. And we thank you that it takes place in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. And we now join with the faith that, uh, on the word that you've given. And we believe the debt is paid in full in less than 18 months. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And um, glory to God. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We'll be we back on here on Sunday morning. Join us then next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Until then, until we see you again, we love you. God bless you. And be walk with the Lord and be blessed by him. In Jesus' name, amen.